Hi, this is Varak Rubanis on Second Life. I'm going to make a tutorial on how to wait and utilize mesh on Second Life. Uh, you can consult my previous lesson on how to texture using Photoshop Extended and ZBrush. I'm going to be using Maya for the weighting and ZBrush for building. And I won't be using Photoshop Extended in this tutorial, but I will make a new tutorial using for alphas so you can make the mesh uh, a little bit more form-fitting because you'll go nuts trying to stop the mesh from penetrating your character. Uh, one thing I found, and of course I'll give all these links of all the tools that I found and uh, any information I will be giving out for how to find all the other stuff. Anyway, um, so here I found the standard five sizes, which I rather liked. It gives you a um, gives you men's files and ladies' files, gives you five different sizes for each. It also gives you a rig to weight your character. Uh, it's very generous of these people. I, um, I don't know exactly who made it, but uh, you can find it online. I will give you a link. Uh, so <clears throat> basically, um, going in, it gives you an OBJ. It gives you an FBX, it gives you a Blender file, and a ZTL, which I have already on my system. I also found other ones later on from Max and all sorts of other places, which is really nice. So if you want to create something with all three sizes, or excuse me, all five sizes, then you may want to um, save everything you can uh, in order to uh, go back and make a different size for uh, the size you're looking for. It, as I understand, mesh will go, will, will resize to your character a little bit, but it won't do things like uh, if I gave the guy like a little bit more fat or whatever. I'll, I'll show you. Um, I'm just going to open this real quick. Uh, put together a uh, folder just for this tutorial. Okay, so here's the standard sizes now. If I made a, a piece of clothing for this particular size, it may go from, it may resize if I made them taller or shorter, but it will not resize to conform to, let's say, his chest size or his stomach size. <clears throat> um, so, I'm like a sculpty map or a sculpty. So what I'm going to do first is uh, I'm going to delete all the other sizes. So I'm just going to do that real quick. I'm trying to do this from scratch so you see everything as it progresses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the standard size. Now this is broken up as usual to his lower half, his upper half, and his head. So it's all there. That's probably extracted from Second Life uh, because of the geometry is sort of kind of weird, wonky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these spheres to make a, a small shirt for this guy. Uh, I will not be recording that because it's going to take too long. So I'm going to pause it here and you can see the end result. Uh, there are, are a lot of tutorials online that will tell you how to use these spheres to create geometry. So here's the end result, and uh, you can tell the vest is has a little bit of sleeves or a shirt, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's very, very simplistic. Uh, you can make it as simple or as complicated as you'd like. Um, so you, because mesh will give you various degrees of higher and lower geometry levels. If you see it from distance, it'll be less than if you see it in Maybe more if you see up close, and less and less if you see in a distance. So uh, ZBrush and Second Life uh, for Mesh can go hand in hand because I can make this as dense as I want or as simple as I want. But I generally will let Second Life generate the more simpler versions of it unless I'm doing an object. But for clothes, for all intents and purposes, this is adequate. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to export the shirt, which I already have here, so I'm not going to bother. Um, and I'll take it into Maya now for waiting. Uh, you can see some of the geometry is coming through the, the the shirt, which is normal, which is why I have to explain how to do alphas, so that'll just be hidden and you know, no problem. Uh, so I'm going to go back into the standard five sizes, and I'm going to go into the Maya 2012. Uh, I have Maya 2013. A lot of people get 
uh, errors when they're exporting, just so, because it's at the back of my mind to say that, just ignore the error, just save it anyway. So basically when you get, when you get here, you pretty much have um, all the textures and everything that they want to set up, and you have all these rigs for male and female. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that off, just turn on the skeleton. Now, it's important to note that the world of Second Life is in Z, is up. So if you go to your window, you go into Windows, your settings, your preferences, and go to settings, you have to make sure this is set to Z. Otherwise, everything is going to be lying on its side. So that's uh, good, good for you to know. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to file, I'm going to import... Uh, the vest I made and the world of ZBrush is in Y uh, so we just have to make a minor adjustment for the vest <clears throat> excuse me so you can see it's on its side so I'm just going to rotate it to better access and <clears throat> you can also use your characters if you want Let's see if we if we do the male, even the small, you can see how geometry fits on him fairly well. However, if I do the male extra large, it's gonna not gonna do too well. So if you're skinning, you may want to save a a skin map if you want, in order for you to maximize on efficiency for if you want to do a bigger size or a smaller size. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my outliner and I'm going to hit the plus mark, uh, excuse me, the shift key, hit the plus mark by the M pelvis and um, oh before I do that you could sit, tell how the geometry is faceted. It has all these facets to it. You want it nice and smooth and, and Second Life. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the polygon group. I'm going to select the geometry. I'm going to go into normals and I'm going to soften normals, which is here. I'll show you again. Soften edge. So you can see it's the same geometry. Except it's a little, a little softer in um, how it looks, which will also reduce your cost in Second Life a little bit. So you don't have a problem with that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit shift and I'm going to hit the pelvis at the top, the M pelvis, and I'm going to go down the list and hit the, the feet. So I'm selecting all the joints and then I'm going to hit shift, select the um, mesh I want or the geometry at this point. I'm going to go into the animation set. I'm going to... That's not the animation set. In the animation effect, go to skin, and then I'm going to go bind skin, and then I'm going to go into the smooth bind skin, and then the options. All the default is okay, closest hierarchy, all the yada yada. I do want to remove the unused influences, that's very important. And then I'll just hit bind skin. So now if I test it, uh, figure on one of the bones, rotate it however you want to rotate it. Okay, that's not really, but anyway, so it just seems to want to uh, rotate on there. Anyway, so what I could do is if I wanted to change the influence on how the bones work on the skin, um, well, actually, I'll show you on here. Um, basically, you can see the skin moves with the bones, so that's good. Um, so I'm going to select the skin. I'm going to go to skin, edit smooth skin. Paint skin weights tool and select the options. So you can see now it's right now it's black. And what I can do is I'm going to adjust my radius on this brush. You can also hit B and then slide your mouse backward and forward. So this is on the foot. You don't want it. I'm on the pelvis. You can see there's some gray on there, which is good. So you can see you can go through it on this list here and see what's influencing what. So if I want to paint a little bit more, I can zoom in and paint a little bit more influence on the chest. If I don't want so much influence, I hit the control key and reduce it. It's good for if you want to do a dress and you want a little bit more influence on the dress itself, you could paint out some influence and paint in other influences of the feet and whatever you want. So we're ready to export at this point. So you want to put it into the Collada format. So I'm going to um, go to File, 
export selection. I'm going to go into options. Make sure it's the DAE FBX export. All the other influences are fine. However, you may or may not get an error. So um, ignore the error if it comes up. So I'm going to say export selection. And since I already exported this once already uh, as a test, um, I can actually do it over again. So it's a test.dae export selection. So I did not get an error, which is good. Uh, so now I'm going to go into Second Life and I'll import it. Now I, I will give you a link to where Second Life um, sort of hides their, their DT grid, what's open and what's closed. All you do is pretty much click on it and it'll take you onto the DT grid. Uh, there is there are certain viewers will not work on the DT grid. I just recommend you to use the default one for now. Uh, once you pass the test and become um, a user of Mesh, or which is on Second Life, which you could do. Um, so I'm in the ADT grid where they allow Mesh. It's also note to point out that you get a lot of money when you're approved and everything to test out your meshes. However, um, the money doesn't follow you, nor do your messages follow you. So this is only a testing grid for what you need. So what I'm doing is I'm uploading the test file, and you can tell at the bat if it worked, your waiting has worked, because you can see a skin weights check uh, box here, and the joints where you can see where it will fit on your character. And here you can actually see where the... Uh, the normals have been smooth, otherwise you'd see edges and facets, sort of like that. But um, So what you want to do is, if I calculate the weights here, the baseline price for something is about 11 lindens, which you can see here, it's 11 lindens. Uh, here's where you could have a little bit more control over how the shirt would look. So if I said this is the medium look, you could see it's pretty, pretty awful. <laughs> Uh, as a shirt, uh, here's the low and here's the lowest, so it's just like a piece. So you sometimes you want to design something that maybe if you're doing a cup or something, you just you could generate this and and retopologize it in ZBrush and put back on all your detail later. So I'm gonna let it go for now because it's pretty simplistic. Also, uh, for the upload, my experience is if you leave this to one with a scale. It makes it really, really tiny if I actually rendered it on the ground, but if I make it to like 30 to 50, it'll render in a decent way if it's an object. But since this is going on me, I don't have to really, I don't have to really worry about the scale. It won't affect either way. So here I'm going to include the skin weights. Uh, I could in, uh, include the joint positions. It won't uh, won't hurt anything. So you again, you get a nice preview of it. Uh, Textures I don't worry about. You have to upload separately anyway. And so once I upload it, which I uploaded already, so I'm not going to do it again. Um, let's see, where is it? Uh, here's the upload I had. If I wear it, which you saw a preview before, you can see it's following my character and the arms are working fine. You can see, again, the geometry is coming through, but we can use an alpha channel to... Uh, block all that out so it looks like it was skin tight. But here you, this particular one, you see the facets. Um, if I detach this, maybe I have another one that, uh, this particular one had facets on it. Um, maybe this one, this one does not have facets on it. So you can see it's smoother. And so that's just the normals that you see. But anyway, so that's the workflow, and I hope this was very informative. And uh, please keep a lookout for my next video, and I will put up the links, <clears throat> excuse me, to where to find all the information that I did in order to make a nice, decent workflow. Take care.